Hi, welcome back to Lakeside Quilt Making Arts. As you have just seen, I deconstructed the culprit block. I couldn't help myself. Last night I was working more on the unicorn quilt, so I could just kind of get a head start on it for the next video that I'm producing for it. And I thought, I'm not going to bed before I figure out what's going on with this block and the two swoops that were giving me problems. Just in case you don't know what I'm talking about, this is the block. I put it on a short that practically went viral, like in my terms it did, like, you know, um, there are more viral videos out there, but in my scenario of a channel, it was viral. People wanted to help me figure out what had gone wrong with this um, block, and especially with the one that looked like it was stretched, like the bias had gotten stretched, which is an easy thing to blame. And I kept on telling everybody, I think I cut it on the grain. I really think I cut it on the grain. But I was beginning to convince myself that I had maybe not done that because I was trying to figure out how to get all my pieces out of a fat eighth. And so maybe I had done that and just in a hurry did that. You know, I could not put a label to what had happened. And um, I was just frustrated with it. I didn't want to touch it. I wanted to move forward. I felt like it was the healthiest thing to do was just to just plow forward instead of getting bogged down in the one thing. But I plowed forward for like two weeks and, you know, redid my studio, decided it was time for a good reset. And this is why I was talking last week. Our quilts and how they progress, they impact us. They, they fuel us, they defuel us, uh, they empower us. And then how we respond to that, there's a story, there's a back and forth, you know, that, that we're in, um, there's a synchronicity to that story, back and forth, the symbiotic, if you will. I'm creating it, but yet it's creating me. It's, it's something to see this journey. So I'm really looking forward to see how this uh, series on Sunday for this one quilt works out. And also for the Moda blockheads and also my creative ones that I'm doing too. The ones that are just kind of um, for my creative, my own personal and creative pursuits. I learn something about myself and I learn something about quilt making with each video that I'm producing. So back to this block. Um, I had put it on a short and I got all kinds of responses. Some people said, hey, maybe you had stitched the straight side down so the curve was on the outside edge. And um, the only way to tell that was it would be to deconstruct it. And But then I'm thinking, well, now I've stretched my straight edge and I would end up with an oval. <laughs> um, but then I got a message yesterday that, that was quite clever. Someone thought that maybe my seam allowance was greater than the necessary quarter inch, than the minimum quarter inch that we're trying to achieve, and that that would make it ruffle. I thought, well, that was kind of interesting. And it just, you know, created enough of an interest in me uh, and renewed my thoughts back over to that block. And so I took it off the design wall before I went to bed, deconstructed it, both sides. There was two swoops that were a culprit. One didn't meet all the way to the other side. And uh, then there was the blue one that looked like I had cut it on the bias and that it had stretched. And um, so I did that, took it off, deconstructed it, and I measured it, took a look at it, inspected it, and then I pressed it flat and um, looked at where I might have made errors with the, um, with the stencil and corrected for that and then realized after I pressed it, I took a look. You know, initially, I didn't see it. When I took it off of the block, I didn't see it right away. I don't. I guess because I hadn't flattened it out well, it just wasn't hitting home. But once I flattened it out with an iron, pressed it, I could see clearly that I had put the straight edge onto the curve of that block. Therefore, it was a curve that was buckling up on that outside edge of the block. And that's why it looked like it was ruffled and it was cut on the bias. It, there was more material there. Let me show you what we're done with now. So remember, this is the one I got done um, from the original process of Jim Kingwell's process. Um, and I did it just fine, but I had to brute force put these corners together so that they came to a point 
meaning after it was done, I went in and whipped a few stitches to pull it together. And I don't like that. I'm gonna to have to figure out how to avoid that using Jen's process. And this was the remaining block of that I, not the remaining block, I put together six. This is the first one. The one we've been discussing is the uh, second one. And this was the third one. So I have three others that are in Ziplocs waiting to go. So I feel comfortable that I'll be able to revisit this and its three siblings and get them, them finished. I do see that there's a little bit of, um, you know, it's not heavily starched and it's not heavily pressed. So maybe that's part of the problem here. There is extra movement, it seems. Maybe I stretched the bias on that. I don't know. But hang on. So this is the one I worked on last week. Uh, and I did this one Barbara Black's way, meaning I used squares and rectangles. And then I'm going to put the swoops on applique style. And so there shouldn't be any, um, there should be a lot less risk of any bias stretching going on. This should be pretty straightforward. This is what I'm going to be working on today. I'll take you along on that journey. If there's anything in particular I learned while I'm putting it together, I'll uh, show you those little tidbits and little video clips. Otherwise, at the end, when I'm done, I'll do a video clip showing you uh, what I've come up with. I, uh, I'm excited to have another block done, and I really want to make sure I get this block done before I have to end the video today. I'm going to get busy. I'm ready to start stitching this one piece. What I did, I and I thought I was recording, but I found out that I wasn't. I watched Barbara again to tell me how she went through the placement of her, she calls it a crescent. To me, it's a swoop. It's always going to be a swoop because once I have something conditioned in my head, it's hard to get it out of there. Uh, crescent makes a lot more sense. Well, I shouldn't say more sense. It makes perfectly good sense and it's more of a geometric term probably. And um, but. I'm going to continue to call it a swoop. She talked about how she marked for her um, placement of her swoop. And so she has the real templates, which I don't have. And her real template would have um, holes in the bigger one that has the seam allowance. It would have holes at two places. And you could mark that um, on your template for the inside, the size of the finished piece. And so she would then transfer two marks. Well, I transferred my marks um, differently. What I did is I took my no seam template and laid that down on top of the, and I'll get a photo of this and put it up while we're talking about it. But um, I laid it down where, how much of that crescent, no, I'm sorry, how much of that wing, that star point, I want to be visible. And that's what this should be referencing, right? So then I marked with pencil initially, and then I got my friction pen out because I needed it for the darker fabric. So I just went ahead and went back over everything that I had marked in pencil. But I just marked uh, my points. I put that in the corner, and then I marked these points because that's where my swoop needs to come up to. And by doing that, I could then, um, I did that on both sides, and then I was able to transfer, um, lay this down on top of the fabric and I could mark where my um, where those points are. And that's always gonna tell me the um, width, it's gonna be exactly the placement of where this should go. So um, then I can transfer that over to the fabric. Okay, that's so far. Oh, the other thing, um, I think I've mentioned to you, Jody, who I mentioned it in Friday's video, um, that uh, Jody, who submitted her images for us to take a look at of her progress so far on this quilt, and um, that I'm just so you know en enamored with how far she's gotten. 
20, all 20 of the blocks plus several of the fan blocks and the medallion. It looks fantastic. She's going perfectly, perfectly um, scrappy on it. It looks great. It's very encouraging to see. But the point I was getting to, she mentions that she's doing something that Barbara does on this edge here, which is where your, you know, your seam allowance will, should be, is she's leaving a good, I think she said half inch. I think Jody said that and Barbara Black is doing that. So you can trim to perfection. I might start doing that. I don't know. Um, I don't want it to throw me off. It's the only reason that I think that I might need to not do that just yet. If I, but I, I don't know. Maybe I think I can handle that. I may start doing that because trimming to perfection makes sense. I do like that concept. I don't like wasting fabric, uh, but I feel like I am at a greater risk of wasting fabric if I produce a block that is not to size. And so I can, I can forego that thought of wasting fabric if I know that I'm losing a quarter inch off of some outside units. Okay, so I've got this one all placed. I finger pressed it down. I've got it pinned in. I made sure that the point of my fabric came to the point where I marked on the, the nine patch. Um, so everything should be in alignment. Gonna whip stitch it. Then I'll park my thread and I'll do the same thing to the other swoops on this block. And then I'll show you where we are at that point. I bought something. I gotta show you. This is Aurifil 80 weight. I wanted to see if I liked it for the applique. I want to see if I liked it for the piecing. Um, I got a gray because I felt like it was the most neutral. I know it's not going to look the best on some of the lighter ones. Um, and I wasn't quite sure how light it was or how dark it was. I'm trying to show you, this is the one I use in my machine primarily that or um, a white. I can't recall exactly its name. So it doesn't look too much darker. I wouldn't mind. Like I'd like to get, let's see how I like it first. Let me start there. If I like it a lot, I'd probably get uh, four or five different colors, you know, a, a light, probably just a pure white, but um, uh, maybe a darker I had a knock at the door. It was my groceries being delivered. So I got interrupted. Basically, I was just saying that I'll get a, a variety of colors, you know, a white, a lighter gray, a darker gray, maybe a, a red or a blue. Uh, but first, let's see if I like the 80 weight. Uh, Barbara did talk about how slippery they are and they try to come out of your needle and that could be frustration. But she had a remedy for that. Uh, I am looking for my needle. I thought, hang on a second. And that remedy was a um, method of tying a tiny little knot up close to the needle. So I, I'm assuming that it means that knot is so fine that it slips through the fabric each time because that needle has got to slip through that fabric for it to actually make your stitches. So that knot's got to go with it. All right, I'm going to get a I did find my needle. I found it. It was over at the ironing station, but it already has thread on it, which I'm going to leave on it. So I'm going to get another one. I love how thin this is. I hope I love this because it feels really good in my fingers. All right. Can you hear my dog growling in the background? One of my neighbors has come home and they're not always here. They're, they live in town, so they don't come to this house very often. Uh, so she's not used to somebody being over there and she's unhappy about the whole thing. <laughs> I think I've shared this before. The needle that I'm using, what is that, John James? It's a size 11 quilting needle. And I'm using that because that's what I heard. Oh, what was her name? If I'm forgetting it. It was Jenny Boyer. Is that correct? Myers, Byers, Byers. I'm sorry. I'll put it on screen. But she, she was the lady who was interviewed by um, Alex and Ricky in her home. And I've talked to you about her before. And I fell in love with 
just her as a person. She's lovely, uh, very classy lady, and wanted to learn from her because she clearly is an expert at hand piecing. Because of, you can tell that from what she's accomplished. I have a light in my face. It's great that it's providing light where I need to see, but it is not great that it's in between me and what I need to see. Let's fix that. Let's get you where you can see things too. All right, got my little bitty needle and my little bitty thread. <laughs> We're gonna make some little bitty stitches. First, we need to get a point on our thread. This thread's probably gonna go into my needle, the eye of my needle a whole lot easier than the other one, but I didn't have any problem with my 50 weight RFL either. So I've asked it previously, but I haven't got any responses. Do any of you guys know if the Quilter Select thread that the Quilt Show sells, is it a totally different brand or is it one of the known other known ones like Superior, RFL, Wonderful? Um, do you know how it compares to the RFL 80 weight? Because if, you know, if I need to get that little carousel of threads that they sell for doing this quilt, then I want to go ahead and do it and stop putting it off. I haven't looked at the price of it. It might, because it's only like bobbins full of it, it might be no more expensive or equivalently expensive to using, um, to buying four or five different spools of this. Okay, I'm good to go. I might need my thimble though. I don't know, maybe not. Let's see. I'm gonna tuck, can you see, even see what I'm doing? Yeah, I'm gonna tuck this out of the way so it doesn't, you know, become a frustration. This one too. Let's minimize the frustrations where we can. I've come to love my Saturdays because working on a, um, slow stitching video on Saturday so I can release it for you guys to watch on Sunday. It's not a bad way to spend the day. Okay, I've got to start thinking like an applique person and not a piecing person. And that's what I'm doing right now. I am appliqueing. You're appliqueing, Dawn, appliqueing. And my needle, my pen is in the way. I'm going to move it. Okay, I am... Starting at the top, which I'm not supposed to do, but I'm doing that just so that I can secure that long enough for me to get a good bite. Okay, I might need a magnifying glass. I can't, I can't see my thread. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. That's some little bitty thread whenever you can't see it. I did buy some invisible thread too. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to catch that point. Should have knotted it, I guess. There's just something soothing about hand stitching, hand sewing, making something quietly, calmly. It's just a piece of the day to fill your thoughts. I say the piece of the day, as long as my dog is not uh, further bothered by my neighbor being home. She is loud when she barks. For some reason, I guess she was so soundly asleep when the groceries were delivered, she didn't bark at all. She's on some medicine that helps her to sleep, though, so I try not to. She does have hearing issues now. She went from being perfectly healthy to having all kinds of issues. She's, how old is she now? She's a minimum of 12 and a half. She's probably over 13. And uh, cause I, I got her when she was, I got her August of 2012. And they said that she was a minimum of six months old, but she looked like she was a minimum of six months old for the next six years. She just looks young. She has been so patient while I went through all my health issues. It's quite unfortunate now that I'm feeling better that she is, you know, 
aged and having issues. Some of her issues look a lot like the ones I did. I think that's kind of ironic. But it's not like I'm the healthiest of individuals physically. So it's not like I'm ready to go out and run, run again with her, you know, like we used to when I first got her. We were both runners. It was great. A lot of my health stuff started soon after I got her. So at first I thought it was an allergy to her, but it clearly became obvious that it was much more than something like that. All right, I'm going to zip around this. I think the difficult stuff has been figured out. Um, I will zip, zip, and see you here in a moment. Okay, I got one swoop slash crescent crescent in place, and I didn't um, set a timer exactly, but I had a couple of things like a video going and some other things to give me the idea that this took about 20 minutes, maybe a little bit over, but roughly right at 20 minutes. It also may have been under 20 minutes for that much, for that matter. So, um... What I'm going to do now is repeat, you know, I'm going to do this yellow one, put it, get it in place, and then keep my thread parked right here until I have this ready. I do like this thread. I like it a lot. I mean, it's just so light and so fine. It disappears so easily. It is hard to see, uh, which is good. Um, you just have to be aware that it's going to be hard to see. So I'm going to get my markings for this yellow one and get it in place. I like it that this is quicker. You know, Barbara did say that it would be a quicker method. And that appealed to me, right? Okay, our friction pins. Okay, now get this one stuck out of the way. You see what I'm doing? Yeah. So this is what I did the first time too. There. There. That lined up well there. Yay. So my arc is a little off here, but it my last stitch is in place. So as I bring this yellow one to this spot, I will be fine. I will be fine. Yay. Okay. All right. Now, there it is. What did I do next? What did I do? No, I did it this way. Made sure. Yes. I'm normally doing this on a wool mat, which gives me some friction against my fabric so it stays in place. But that's where my marks are, and these marks are going to line up to the ones I made on my fabric. Pop this in place, come over here like that. Okay. And got that turned, put this point right there. Turn back the seam allowance to that point. And put my needle through there, my pin through there, and onto the point on the back. Oh yeah, this is nice. See, I should have been listening to Barbara all along. Oh, that's going to be nice how pretty that comes to a point right there. Yay. Get a little quarter inch turned under here. Hold it in place so it doesn't go and get a mind of its own. OK. 
can have fabric having a mind of its own, can we? Reminds me of what I heard Dave in Dave's crafts room, Dave of Dave's crafts room say in his last video. I don't know if he said it before, but if he doesn't put that on a t-shirt and start selling it, I'm going to talk to him about doing it because I think it's brilliant. He said, and I may have some of the wording off, but pretty much it was, I ain't afraid of any of, I ain't, I ain't, I think he used like the double negative. I ain't afraid of no fabric or I'm not afraid. I'm not scared of any fabric. And uh, that's such a great mentality. And wouldn't that be great on a shirt with the right graphics uh, showing you, you know, maybe one of those ridiculously meticulous uh, tiny quilts where you get a log cabin that's the size of a dime, something like that, or some other really complex thing showing that and saying, I'm not afraid of it. I mean, really, we we cultures have got to be bold and brazen, and I love hearing him say that. It just made me laugh. A fabric cannot have a mind of its own. It is just fabric. We are the ones in control. Now, this is telling me that I wish I'd added some fabric over here because it's not coming. If, if I have these points where it needs to be over here, I'm not coming all the way out to the edge of where these my nine patch is. And my nine patch is actually... Um, cut accurately. So what I need to try to do is make sure that whenever I am stitching this that I'm not grabbing any of this fabric and pulling it that direction any. I need to be really aware of that. But I know that my fabric, my blocks are not going to be the exact eight and a half because I had printer issues and I decided that my blocks were going to be the size that my printer decided them to be. Because I guess I decided I was the queen of this show and not my printer. If that makes sense. My printer actually got to control the whole situation. But yet I'm claiming that I took charge. I can't print from my computer. And then on my phone, I could not get it to... Um, I can print from my phone. And so from my phone, I could not get its size. I didn't have the features available to make it, uh, to change its scale or anything. So I just had to roll with it. Okay, I'm going to get this one done. Okay, before I started stitching, I thought it best if I just go through each of these connection points and release them, pull the fabric towards this outer edge a little bit, just a few hairs few threads, I should say, not hairs. And it won't make really any difference with visually on how the thing looks, but it'll make a difference once I'm trying to piece it together inside the quilt when my fabric is a sixteenth of an inch away from the edge instead of an eighth of the inch of away. That's much better right there. I think the owners of Magic Pen should put me on their payroll because every time I touch one of them in my videos, I brag about them. I love them. They're just a fantastic pen. They're easy to use. Wouldn't mind it if the grip was a little bit bigger, but there is a grip and I can manage it. And I think most people could. I know there are unique situations people everyone's dealing with their own things much better to be a sixteenth of an inch away and not an eighth Just ran out of thread, so I thought it was a good time to pop back onto the camera and let you know that I'm going even quicker this time than I did this time, just getting you know more used to having the needle in my hand. 
But look at how much I was able to recover. Remember when I first put it on there, I had a good eight uh, of an inch showing, which I have over here, which is going to be a problem. Eh, it may not be. I don't know. But I edged it down. I eased it down. I released each of the pins and I kind of, you know, used my fingernails to scratch it down a little bit just to, to move it a, a thread or two. And then as I was sewing, I just made sure that I did not come up at any point on the top surface. I was only coming in to the yellow fabric along the outside, the interior uh, turned edge. And then that's allowed another sixteenth of an inch to come this direction. And it looks really good. It looks really good. So I'm going to thread my needle again and then finish this section and work the rest of the way around. I'm really glad that this is taking um, as little time as it is because I can get more done and it's less intimidating to sit down to do it, right? So in the amount of time that it's gonna take me to do all four pieces, I would have just gotten two pieces done, um, maybe just one and a half pieces actually, because I bet you I'll be getting even quicker with these. Okay, I have added an adjustment to how I am preparing each of my swoops before I get it pinned down and sew it. And let me show you why. Okay, first, let me just brag on something before I show you my next mistake. But uh, doesn't that look good? That's a nice, pretty point. Looks good. Ignore the fact that you can see some fabric there. I'm going to, I'm learning. I'm learning and I think I can still overcome that. I'll work on how I do that and get back with you. Okay, so I'm gonna be putting this one, the swoop down. So I started the same procedure. I went over here and I marked my point, my point with that one in the corner and marked down here. So I thought, oh, there's no need for me to do this side because when I marked here and here, I also had already marked here, but I thought, okay, I'll just go ahead and just double check. Well, you know what I discerned then is that my yellow is not on the right arc that it's supposed to be on. It does look good to the naked eye. It looks good, but it's not as it should be. So I'm going to start using my friction pen to go around my and Barbara may have done this and I just forgotten. I'm gonna get this in place, get my two points right there, right there, lined up with my points that I just marked on the fabric. My tips where they're supposed to be. Everything looks good. All right, I am going to mark with my friction pen. And if I sew on catching that line then my swoop is going to be where it's supposed to be. I can barely see it there. Barely see it. And I don't need anything else to make it this difficult. So I'm going to redraw that line. There. Okay. That should improve my piecing, my applique. I like using my Ot light right here. It helps me a lot. However, when I use it, I sit on the edge of my chair instead of properly sitting back. And that's not terribly comfortable. So I need to figure out, like I need an Ot light that is at my recliner. <laughs> Man, I've that would call my name. If I had a nice hot light setting up my recliner, oh my goodness, it'd be hard to get me up off that thing to do anything else. As I've shared with you guys, there's just, um, when you're running a YouTube channel, a lot of things to purchase. When you're starting up with quilting, there's a lot of things to purchase. So it just all adds up. When you're getting a studio ready, to do a YouTube channel and when you're getting a studio ready to do all the projects, there's just a lot to consider, a lot of different things to take your money. So you have to be discerning about the pacing of those purchases. 
So for right now, I sit here underneath this one art light and thrilled that I have it. I'm trying to finish this one block before I give myself a break. Because I don't want to be tempted to not come back to it, you know. So that's been put down on that line. So I feel much better about that. I should have noted that when I measured the previous one, the very first one that I did, but I didn't. Like I should have done something about it to make sure it didn't happen on the yellow one. Because I kind of noticed it with the blue one, but it just wasn't as significant of an amount. So it just didn't register with me to take any precautions for the next one. I like my crescent is, or my sweep is a little flat at the top. We don't want a plateau. Okay, I want an actual arc. All right, I feel good about that, except I have a little bit of fabric here, but I'll try the same technique. And that is when I come up from the back, I am not coming up through the top of this fabric. I'm only catching it inside that turned edge. So that allows me to pull pull it this way a thread or two, even further than what it is right now. I'm feeling good about things. I'm done. Let me show you. <laughs> um, I ended up taking a break, so it did take more time since I last spoke to you, but only because I took a break. It looks nice. My points are nice. Everything's done. My next move, let me get this pointed down at it. Hang on. There, I think it's easier for you to see. All right. My next move is to remove this material here in the back. And I don't think that she had any particular comments about how to do that. So I'm just going to probably give it a hefty quarter inch. Just use my little scissors and go around it. Um, I don't know why I feel like I am going to be lessening the integrity of it by doing that. But I won't be. Just kind of feels weird, I guess. Making sure I'm not cutting my top. Kind of got my finger on the leading edge here, separating it from the front piece. This is not gonna be pretty. Kinda wonder if I won't do better doing it this way. I really need something to hold this up so I don't have to try to angle. There, that's much better. Because my head is fused to my body, to bend, to look down, I have to use my thoracic and that area is not, let's just say it should not be used that way. So I need to keep things up at my height. Is there a better technique for this? If there is, y'all let me know. This feels kind of primitive. Okay. One little background swoop taken off. Seemed like that could be used for something. Not too bad. A little imperfect right there, but I don't think it's gonna matter. But just so in case it does, I'll clean it up a little bit. I need to take a look at the time, but I think what I'd like to do next is to go back to that culprit block and sew hand stitch down one of those swoops that I took off. This just feels really weird. There's gonna be a, is it because my, Points of my scissors are so small, the blades are so small that it, I don't know, I feel like it's, I'm doing something wrong. I feel like there's, it's lacking finesse. Oh, it's so nice. Anyway, if I could get one of those swoops put on before I end my day, I will feel good.
about things. Let me see if these won't do better. Yeah, I feel like that's easier to use because it's got a longer blade. But because it has a longer blade, I could easily snip something I really shouldn't be. I just love, both pairs are Karen K. Buckley scissors. But I tell you, it is just hard to beat these things. These little green ones, love them. All done. Yay. Oh, I feel good. Now I'm going to go grab that culprit block and see if I can't get one of those swoops on. I could be crazy here, but I'm going to try appliquing my swoop on. Well, can you tell? No, you can't tell now. But this was already pressed down because I had already put a swoop on it, right? So I left it there. I didn't press it back out. And I put this, the blue fabric on the back and I pinned it and I'm just going to applique it. Why not? You can tell, by the way, no ruffle. I did not stretch my bias. I just put it on wrong. It's done, my friends. It's done, and it feels good. It's not ruffled. It did not get stretched. It went on there beautifully, and I did do what I said. I just applicated it down. Instead of stitching, uh, instead of pressing out that turned edge, um, and I could go back and do it properly, I guess, but I just applicated. That edge was already turned, and so I just put this underneath it and applicated it together. I feel so much better having that done. I really do. So I did this while we talked today and I got that put on. So I'll call this video done and, and uh, my stitching efforts for the day done. I hope that you were productive. Please let me know what you've been doing. Show me pictures. Please send in your pictures. I want to see what you're doing. When Jody sent hers last weekend, it just really helped me to feel like I'm not the only one out there. I mean, she blew me out of the water with what all she's gotten done. But there's no sense of being insufficient or inadequate or anything like that because she's doing so beautifully. I know I'm a newbie and I know I'm slow. I just, you know, I kind of overthink things and I'm kind of meticulous about stuff. I am fine with that. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of areas about myself that I know I need to change and I will change, but I'm fine about doing this at the rate that I'm doing it. I appreciate you guys so very much. Thank you for being on this journey with me and keeping me encouraged. Please send me your pictures. Can't wait to see them. Talk to you later. Bye.